This is an absolute honor. I still have my tickets for the first Jackass film oh, from 20 wow. years ago. Yeah, Kevin. I went on opening night and literally the night after. I mean, I was wow. obsessed with these films. That's man. great. Thank uh, you. I knew we were no, singing this songs a... about your name for a reason. <clears throat> oh, well, I, well, what did the song sound like? Kevin, I'm in Kevin, and our heart beats so, you know. <laughs> we're climbing the stairway to Kevin. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, I've always wanted to ask you this because it's so iconic when you say, hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. It's, I mean, it, to me, it's just it, it's an iconic piece of pop culture. How did that start? How did you know you wanted to start your shows and your movies like that? Like, wh how, where did that come from? Um, when I first did the first thing I shot for the Big Brother video on self-defense equipment, I just introduced myself. Hello, I'm Johnny Knoxville, United States of America or whatever. Mm. And I think it was Spike who said, you should introduce yourself that way every time. And I'm like, oh. all right. How has the process changed over the years where you do a stunt with real people who don't know you're doing it? I know you can blur their faces out if they don't sign the releases. But for example, that scene when Zach hits that pad and Johnny, you blow up into the ceiling that the staff didn't know what was going on. How do you get the cameras in there? How does that process work without them knowing? For that one, we needed a store owner that wanted to prank some of his employees. Oh. And, uh, and then we would even bring in some uh, day workers just to add more to it. So we would hire people for the day that came in. And uh, yeah, it was, it's tricky. I'll tell you what, it's tricky. And in, in we shot this movie uh, in COVID time. So it's really yeah. hard to shoot out in public. We didn't get to do as much as we normally would. Yeah, the cameras are set up first thing in the morning. And after we shoot with a group of employees, like those employees are wrapped for the day and we bring in a new set of employees like day workers or whoever, yeah. oh. you know, so that way everyone is fresh and they don't know what's going on. Johnny, this is a question I wanted to ask you as well, because I, I find this interesting. The bull stunt, I know you've talked a lot about it. I know that you went to the hospital. It's brutal to watch in the film. It's probably one of the best stunts I've ever seen. And the footage is absolutely spectacular. You. When you do a stunt like that, you could die. I mean, that is that is something that, that that bull could have killed you. Like you could have broken your neck or something. When you do a stunt like that, do you like call your family prior and say, I'm about to do something like this, just, just so you know? I mean, like, do you prepare like that? Because that is a wicked stunt, man. No, I think, I think if I did that, it would bring too much attention to the fact of what I'm about to do, uh, right? I do give them a hug that morning. And but without, you know, give him an extra hug that morning. But when it comes time, I'm in a state of mind. I was like, let's do let's go now. Let's do this now. I'm like, Jeff, just just get the 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 ring ready, the bull ready and call me at the last second. I'll walk in and do it right then because I don't want to be waiting around once I get there. That's terrible. That's awful. You know, I just want to like Jeff gets it all ready for me and I just walk in and get smoked and then go to the hospital. It's funny because of all the guys we have, a you know, it's a pretty big cast, especially yeah. now we added some new guys, but he's the only one who will do those kind of the stunts that he has no control over the situation at all. He just has to stand there and take whatever's coming. And yeah. that's the big difference, I think, between you and the rest of the cast. It's like you're well, the only one who will who's stupid enough to stand there <laughs> in that situation. I thought Aaron's stomach was about to get ripped open by that bear. I don't know how the hell you guys controlled that because then that guy walked in, that blew my mind. Um, one thing I wanted to know, because I've seen all the stunts, I've seen all the movies. What is the one jackass stunt that is the best that never happened? The one that you wish you could have pulled off, you had the idea for it, it just didn't, you couldn't get it done or it just wasn't safe enough. There's... It wasn't safe enough. Or, I mean, you know, in, in terms of like it would actually kill someone. Well, we had a really gross idea a long time ago where um, basically we were going to lipo <laughs> Preston. We would give Preston liposuction <laughs> and then cook a ham and cheese sandwich in his fat. Yeah. And then he was going to eat it and get fat again. <laughs> uh, we called that, yeah, that was the, uh, the Monte Cristo. And uh, we had it. We were about to shoot it in Mexico. We found a Mexican. We were going to Tijuana to shoot it. Plastic surgeon that was willing to do it. And then it just fell apart. Uh, and we've had a couple other, we have a new idea which I don't think we should talk about because yeah. we, we're on the verge of making this one happen. Yeah. And it also requires an unnecessary surgery. And uh, so uh, there's a few that are lurking around and you know maybe we'll do the Monte Cristo one day. Yeah. Um, 
That would be awesome. Well, thank you guys very much, Johnny. You're the, one of the big reasons why I wear Chuck Taylors. I'm rocking my All red right. one. Yeah, yeah, buddy. There That's we go. Awesome. So, Steve-O, 20 years ago, um, I had the pleasure. I was such a Jackass fan. I went and saw you on stage. It was Steve-O and Friends. You came to the Norva in Norfolk, Virginia, and I have my ticket for that still. Nice. Um, and if you look here, Ryan Dunn uh, signed it for me. He, after the show was over, he walked over on the stage and he was the nicest dude and was so cool. Talk that was the show where you swallowed a light bulb. It was the most insane thing I've ever seen. Um, but just having the film dedicated to Ryan, having seen him live in, in person, such a talent. But obviously, like, just what did it mean to you to see the film dedicated to him? And obviously, you were on tour with him. It's so cool that you guys got to do all that stuff together. Um, yeah, I mean, of course, it's, it's wonderful to be able to dedicate that to Ryan. Um, I wanted to uh, honor him because in the in the first movie he put a toy car up his butt when <laughs> I backed out of doing it. Yeah. And for this movie, oh. I thought since Ryan's not here and he did that for me, maybe, maybe I can pay it back to him. And I asked the director for the opportunity to put the biggest thing up my butt that I possibly could. <laughs> and by expressing a desire to have that happen, the director was no longer interested. In it. <laughs> yeah. it turned out that was my way out of getting something up my butt. <laughs> I beg you for it. You know, we man, I've, I wanted to ask you this because one of my favorite things about these films, and I always wanted to know if these were real, are like moments where you're looking off the camera and you're saying, Jeff, I, I need you to get me all out of this. Like, are, are those... <laughs> Are those real? Are you are, are you if over I say, saying that? If are I you, say Jeff, that is for real. Because that's my that's my last go-to. That's very if, real. Yeah, if, if, if it if it comes to me yelling at Jeff, that is like that's my last straw. <laughs> um, one thing I find interesting is the MPAA, uh, the rating system is always interesting to me because of what you can do and what you can show in a film. I'm blown away that you got away with what y'all got away with in this one in terms of like the nudity. And I, I always wondered this in terms of when you're shooting moments like that, is it is it are you specifically doing it in angles that are that the MPA is going to be cool with? Do you even think about that or is that like a edit made later? I, I think I can speak for all of us is I don't I guarantee we don't think about that. But I know um I apparently the rules of male nudity are very gray. There's a lot of gray area. There's yeah. not an exact amount of time you can show a wiener on screen. But the one rule I do know is you can't be hard. Yeah. So right. you want to look as good as possible, but not too good. Yeah. And then you got right. yourself a movie. Right. You get to stre stretch it a little bit. <laughs> I mean, look, penises Before. are just funny and they're really underused in film. As a kid, uh, I was watching your the scene with the bees. And when I was a kid, I was mowing my lawn wearing a bathing suit and I went over a beehive and you know I didn't have that many bees go to that area, but I had a few and I'll never forget it. It traumatized me forever. But that scene in the new movie might be one of the most insane things I've ever seen. Can you talk about filming that moment and kind of like, I mean, that obviously, that would freak me out beyond belief. Yeah, I mean, thank you, first off. And uh, I, I've always felt very comfortable around bees. I think the three of us having worked with so much wildlife over the years are that way. We, we just kind of think, you know, we're, I've worked with bees so many times that I thought if I just stay calm, then I'll be okay. But this was a different experience because as soon as the bees came out, they were lighting me up, stinging me everywhere. And that just made me freak out more and more. Uh, and so by the end of the day, I was stung at least a dozen times and in places that you just don't want to get stung. So, uh, yeah, it, it was it was remarkable. Yeah, with bees, the more you freak out, the worse, it, the, yeah. More, yeah. the more they freak out, right? Isn't that yeah. something in your body, too? Once you freak out, the bees can tell. With your pheromones, your pheromones I imagine. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, when it comes you, to pheromones. <laughs> <they're all over laughs> the place. Yeah. Talking to you guys after all these years means a lot to me. And, and your lives outside of Jackass, you guys lived your lives. I mean, as fans, we watch the films. They come out. They come and go in the episodes. But you guys live your lives outside of Jackass as well. And I'm wondering if you look back at those 20 years from number one to number four, what is the biggest change you see in yourself? Obviously, Steve, I know you talk a lot about- I haven't changed one bit. Not one bit. No, no but what is the biggest change you see in the thing, in the thing that's remained the same? Um, I'll start with you, Steve. Steve, I know you've been very open about your, everything. And I, I think what you do is so brilliant because you help so many freaking people when you talk about that stuff. So I just hope you know how many people are helped by that. Well, thanks, man. Um, 
I think that, uh, yeah, I mean, like in, for me, everything's changed and nothing's changed. You know, um, I kind of live a double life now where uh, I'm all careful about spiritual practice and, and, and taking care of myself and all that. But then at the same time, I'm trying to shove things up my butt. It's true. We man for you. And I mean, if you look at those 20 years, like what's something you see that's changed and different? Uh, from when we started to now, I kind of used to just stress over things like in general life. And now 20 years later, I'm pretty much nonchalant. Don't give a about anything, you know, and I just go with the flow and, you know, life's been good. And I just keep keep rolling and not caring. Wow. And Chris I learned that later in life, most older people, the first thing they say they would have taken back is caring what other people thought. Mm. And I thought, you know what, just let it all go. Who cares? And that's what makes jackass even more fun because we don't care. We, we love what we do, but we don't, you don't care. Like we're not embarrassed. We're not, we don't, you know, we just do what we do. Oh, there's it's, such a confidence. And yeah. the, the laughter out of it is much greater than anything you can have. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. I mean, I honestly, like what you said just now is so important because these films do that for people as well. Yeah. So Chris, for you, and like, what do you see in I, 20 years? I, I think from the first movie till now, I mean, I, I, I didn't realize at the beginning how special of a thing that we all had. And then, you know, I quickly did when the first movie came out and how big it was, but I think I was just valuing what we have. And like during this movie, all of us were, you know, making every day, like it was our last day, you know, filming ever, like, just making this one count and, and, um, you know, cause just thankful to be, to be able to be making another Jackass movie. Like, and I think in life, just like, like we man said, like not caring about what people think and, and not trying to like control things. Life's really about what it throws at you and how you react to it. Yeah. It's not about what you plan. Cause it never goes yeah. as planned. <clears throat> no. And we, we, <laughs> we could have never imagined that we'd be doing this yeah. at this time. And, but, you know, we've been together our whole life and, and um, you know, we know how special it is. That's awesome. Well, last thing I'll ask you guys is this. I mean, I've, uh, over the years, I've watched every single episode of the show. I've watched all the movies. Um, I've seen all the stunts that have been visibly put out to people. For each of you, what is the what is the one stunt you heard of that you that never came to be um, like something that you were like, oh, my God, we're actually going to do this. And then it didn't actually happen. Hmm. Um. We've been pretty good about going through with most of everything. Yeah. There, there was yeah, one yeah, where a um, there's a bit I made up called "Don't Poo on My Pee," that we never <laughs> <laughs> we never got to film. So hopefully we'll make another movie. <laughs> there was one where uh, they got a bounce house that we were all going to oh, go God. down um, like an Olympic ski jump in the bounce house and. Uh, the problem was that what kept it inflated was a huge generator and to have that it weighed like 500 pounds yeah. yeah have that like trailing behind us to land down on a us. huge mountain yeah, yeah. off yeah. a big jump the with, old school ski with, jump yeah it was, so we didn't it was the that. worst idea yeah yeah we didn't do that yeah wow. we Even man for you generator we could hit our heads together yeah, it right. was a, it was a human hamster ball yeah, you know yeah. like with a lot of hamsters it was it was the yeah. worst <laughs> idea ever right when i saw that i was like nope that's not <laughs> yeah. happening yeah yeah and we man for you anything that was presented to you that was like that you that never did but that was insane no i usually try and talk at myself or talk jeff and out me out of every, like the bits he brings but in the end i still end up doing them yeah well <laughs> yeah there's nothing uh, yeah you i kind of know when you when a bit's for you i yeah. think and yeah. some bits are certain you're well, just how do you figure that out for that bit yeah <laughs> like how do you figure out steve that you would get the b bit is that do you present it <laughs> um, I heard about it. I said, I want that. And then I said, I want that to be my new skateboard pro model. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, guys, this has been a pleasure. I really appreciate it. As a fan, this movie was everything I wanted and needed in a Jackass movie. You guys are awesome. I appreciate the deep dive as well into the emotions of what these movies mean as well. So I appreciate it, guys. Cool. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey, Thanks for having us. How old are you, man? I'm 37. 37. Because yeah. uh, you're, you're really holding it together fine, dude. Good looking guy. Oh, I think Steve was you. flirting with you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I'll take it. That's awesome. It was a pleasure speaking with you, bro. <laughs> nice talking to you guys. Y'all be safe, okay? Have a good one. Aaron, I'm going to start with you only because 
out of all the jackass stunts I've seen over the years, the one where I genuinely, I mean, I was always worried for everybody, but I thought that bear was literally going to rip your stomach open. And I just, I wanted to ask you about how that scene goes down. Cause there's a guy outside the doors goes, I'm going in to get the bear. Yeah. But I mean, at any point that bear could have done that. I, know. Yeah. That, I, I had that the same feelings that you did. I, yeah. I didn't, I thought it was going to rip my face off like my whole head. So we sat down and they, we were supposed to do this polygraph test and whatever. I knew something was set up or whatever. I thought they were going to release a bunch of bees when the honey and I'm allergic to bees. And I was like, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but then, then he left the room. <laughs> Unless you want to just kill me. Oh, I'll tie him up and kill him. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> and so once Knoxville started pouring the honey and the salmon on me, I was confused. I thought it was bees. And then they opened that door up and a, a brown bear comes out. It's like this. Was it was big. the biggest creature it's ever been and when you're strapped into something yeah. and you can't move mm. it's a completely different feeling like i yeah. didn't even have a chance to like run or anything and at a certain point and, and i got a dog collar shocking me so when it's reaching down it, it literally reached down my pants and and ate salmon off my dick like it, it, was, it was like the hardest thing and i'm strapped in and i was using all my power to, to and i couldn't move uh and then i'm getting electrocuted and, and then finally it ran out of salmon and it like opened its mouth and growled yeah. at me like this. And it, its mouth was about this big, which could totally fit around my head. And I, I, I basically thought I was going to die right there. Um, How did they know it, it wasn't going to do that? Hand. It could What's have that? easily ripped your stomach open. Yeah, I was like, I mean, it's a bear. What are you like? There's no control over that. Oh my God. I like the, the contrast of what was happening to you. And then you got this shirt that just says, Yeah, so many books. Oh, so the books. Time. <laughs> 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 I, I, I didn't know what was going to happen to me that day, but I thought that would be a good it was shirt, a to wear. shirt to wear. perfect shirt to wear. But then I ran out of, uh, it ran out of salmon. To me now. And it almost bite my, bit my hand. And that's when they pulled the plug on it and got us all out of there. It was crazy. So That was insane. Yeah. Dave, uh, you. You are probably, if I, if someone asked me my favorite jackass stunt of all time, it's got to be in the first film when you take a shit in that hardware store. <laughs> Thank you, and, sir. And I think that might be one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. When you do a scene like that, how is it set up in a way where you get approval to put cameras in there to actually do that scene? How does Jeff and the team even operate that? Back then, we did not have that kind of stuff dialed in at all. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, we were thinking about the idea and I'm like, I know a place this hardware store called hippo hardware in portland oregon i'm like they are jerks <laughs> they're gonna be perfect <laughs> every time i go in there they're so mean to me already and i'm just trying to buy something for my sink and they're mean they're like, great though this is, yeah yeah mean in a good way you know they're <laughs> yeah. just like like grumpy old funny guys and so they've got everything you need for toiletry yeah so anyways <laughs> yeah i knew that was the perfect spot but um Iconic. as far as uh i was waiting in that parking lot three hours that's why i in ended up you know shitting my pants in the van because they couldn't figure out a way. There's too many people in there, and they couldn't. You know, our process was so like flawed that, yeah, it ended That's up crazy. making the movie better. I think because of oh, that. awesome. Well, they're giving me a minute left. I'm gonna go to Preston and then go to Eric. Uh, Preston, the the sweat from Jackass 3D. <laughs> I mean, I like talk about like vomit, like in terms of like that sequence, in terms of like Stevo and everything. What do you remember about filming that scene? I, I, that scene is so funny to me. I'd just to be extremely hot in there, you know, 140 degrees and getting really dizzy and then wanting to get out of there really bad. <laughs> Steve-O got sick quick. Oh. <laughs> that yeah. scene is, so, you, can, you can feel the heat when you're watching that scene. Like it was, it was oh, so yeah. insane. I like, the, I like the parts you picked out of our stuff. It's funny, <laughs> yeah. you picked some oh. nice stuff. That's all the shit I love. Eric, I mean, one of the things I find, find I love about these films and like obviously with the idea of being part of Jackass is this idea of like being a part of it, being able to say your stunt into the camera. But one of the things I find interesting, because I think Jasper at one point even says, I want to say my name and he actually says his name into the camera. Um, for you, when you do a stunt, is is the, in, in your mind, do you want to get hurt in sense of like the injury? <laughs> you, know, you, you know what I mean though? Because the injury almost makes the stunt better arguably like i mean aaron your balls man i don't know how the heck those are still going um but eric, like you know yeah. eric for you like how you know is that is that part of it do you want to get injured oh well, i may be a bit crazy because if it wasn't you know looking as good and as gnarly as it could you know sometimes even jeff would be like mm, maybe do it again <laughs> so there was an aspect of you know you wanting to to deliver the performance in the best way you can and i think the real reactions come from that you know yeah. it, you can't expect it. You can't control it. 
you know, it is what it is. Uh, Jasper, for you, like, I love that idea of being able to say your name and then introduce the stunt. I mean, to me, that's the first thing that I would want to do prior to the stunt because that's a, it's an iconic thing for Jackass. So can you talk about that aspect for all of you and, uh, and the idea of what the art form to that is and how you figure out how you're going to do it? Do you practice it or is it kind of off the cuff? Uh, it kind of just comes of whatever comes to your head. So there was actually a stunt that we was filming and I was supposed to say like, hi, I'm Jasper, welcome. I mean, not welcome to Jackass, but wherever the stunt was, but somehow I couldn't do the stunt. So I wasn't able to say my name and it bummed me out. I'm like, oh. man, I want to have one to myself. So when I got that moment and I was like, no, I want to say my name. I'm glad they put that in there. So it felt good. That was awesome. You know, uh, uh, Rachel, for you, the, the scorpion uh, Botox is one of the most insane things I've ever seen. I, I, I'm, I, there's a few times in this film where I did look away and that was one of them, the one that the close up into your lip. Um, uh -huh. is, is that entire scene what we're seeing? Were there more stings than that? Or is that exactly how it went down? Did you do it more times? I definitely did it more times. There was actually another scorpion that isn't shown that's smaller and had way more of a powerful sting. It was one of the most painful things I've ever felt in my whole life. And I told myself I would not cry on the set of Jackass. But after that bit, it was like sweat was coming from my eyes. Wow. It was so painful. It was, it was gnarly to watch. It was gnarly to watch. It that scene was insane. Jasper, everything with your dad, I, I, that, that spider scene, I will never forget <laughs> in my life. Um, you know, I've always wanted to know this because this could, this could be a general question, but you can also speak on it if, if, if this is a scene that you, would, you were involved in in terms of that. But when you go into a place with real people, I know that eventually after the bit is done, they have to sign releases or they'll blur your face if you don't sign it. Like that furniture store sequence when Johnny gets lifted up into the, <laughs> into the ceiling. Yeah. Can you talk about how a scene like that is executed? Like in the store doesn't know, do they just know that cameras are being placed in the store that day? How does that work? Um, I'm not even sure. Well, what happened, I know because Zach and I were in that scene. Um, I think the store, I don't know if the store necessarily knew what was going on, but the people that we pranked did, did not have any idea what was happening. They thought they were hired, they were temp hires to work at a furniture store that day. And so um, I don't think they had any idea. I think um, they had to like sign something as if they were going to work, you know, at the at the furniture store. But they had yeah. no idea there was a prank that was happening. Um, to Poopsies, I, I mean, if, you, if you're cool with me calling you that, because I just think that's an awesome, awesome name. Um, I wanted to ask you, because as I showed you guys at the beginning, I was a fan of this as a kid on TV. And then I obviously going to all the films, the 3D one was brilliant. Um, to be in the Jackass film and then like to do a stunt in front of the actual original guys like is there is there a is there a specific like do you want to get injured is is the injury kind of the badge of honor like do you expect that um of course yeah <laughs> you want to you want to show up and give it give it your all you know you don't you don't want to be the kid that freaking didn't do the best he could do you know so yeah you got to go full force send it as hard as you can and yeah, hopefully it ends up good or in, it, mostly, most of the time it ends up bad, but that's, that's what you want. <laughs> you know what I mean? If it, if it, if it ends up, oh, he didn't get hurt, you know, like, no, you gotta do it again. So yeah, you definitely want to have the best, like, uh, I don't know how to say it, but the best performance you want, yeah. you know, so, yeah, you gotta yeah. give it, give it your all. Yeah, part of me wonders sometimes, like if you see Wee Man going like, hey, Jeff, get me out of here. Like, I always wonder if those are like real moments. Like, yeah. like oh, he's yeah. like, like yeah. dude, get yeah, me yeah. out of here. Like, yeah. like when, when uh, who was it with the bear? Um, I'm blanking. Yeah. yeah, that Aaron's, oh my God. I thought that bear was going <laughs> to rip his stomach open. That was nuts. Yeah. <laughs> so Zach, in that furniture scene, you're, you're obviously, you jump yeah. down and you lift Johnny into the thing. How many times is, well, I'm assuming you only have one take for that, right? Uh, yeah, I mean, we did it a bunch, um, which it's like, it's funny because like, sometimes like people would react. It was funny. Some people that were working there, just like, like, Oh, no, like, you know, it's normal work for us. Like they're like, didn't like, they didn't react at all. I was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah. Like when those, when those what? two people, when those two people what? didn't react, I'm like, they have seen some shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. What, did they, what did they see at work every yeah. day? You know, like, yeah. normal. but, uh, but yeah, but that was like, I think like one of the best ones. So 
That was classic. Well, congratulations to all four of you. This has yeah. been an honor just to see this film and talk to you all. You guys all crushed it. You had scenes that are iconic in the Jackass uh, filmography from now on. So thank you very much. I hope you all are staying safe and uh, thank you for your time today. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice